fifth graders, Mrs. Bellatash here, and we are going to set up a worm habitat. And a worm habitat is going to contain all of the different spheres that we were talking about last week in Earth's system. Remember, a system is a group of interacting parts. And last time we talked about the geosphere, the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, and the biosphere. We just started talking about the biosphere. So we're going to make a worm habitat. And as we do, I want us to pay attention to what sphere we are interacting with. Now, in your notebook masters, there is a little sheet that says making a red worm habitat. And I'm going to follow these directions. If you would like, you can glue this into your science notebook. Um, but I'm going to follow this as we make our red worm habitat. Step one, it says put one to two centimeters of garden soil in the jar. So here's my jar. And I'm going to put little bit more. There's some soil now in the jar. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this soil is that the soil, while the soil, there are parts of the soil that are the geosphere, there are also parts of the soil that are part of the biosphere and atmosphere and hydrosphere. So remember when we talked about how rocks are weathered in fourth grade and second grade? So part of the earth includes rocks, sand, silt, clay. Then part of this earth also includes some so sticks and some leaves. It also includes some moisture, some water, and there's little spaces in between all the soil, which has got space for air, atmosphere. So this, even just this soil, has all four parts of Earth's system. Okay, next thing. Tear two large sheets of newspaper into thin strips. Moisten the paper strips with water. They should be moist, but not dripping wet. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna use newspaper. I actually have some shredded paper, and I'm gonna put it in there. And I'm going to use a mister to make sure it's moist. Now, let's think about the shredded paper. The shredded paper comes from a tree. So while it's not living now, it was living. It was organic. Anything that was living is organic, not in the new modern sense of organic, meaning no pesticides, but organic meaning coming from something that was living. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it. So now the paper was organic matter, biosphere. The water, I added some water, which is from the hydrosphere. Next thing, fill the jar with damp newspapers until it's almost full. Okay, I'm gonna add a, about six centimeters from the top. I'm gonna add a little bit more paper. A little bit more water. Add some natural leaf litter, five or six dead leaves, two or three dead twigs, and a small amount of fresh household waste, apple cores, lettuce scraps, eggshells, coffee grounds, etc. So I have some leaves that are in this soil here, and I'm going to put them in there. Just the leaves. I'm trying to get the leaves part and some of the sticks. Okay, now. I had a pear for lunch, and I have some of my scraps from my pear here, so I've added that. When the materials are in the jar, put on the lid and shake it to mix it up. Okay. Use a mister to moisten the habitat. The content should be moist, but not dripping wet. There's my habitat. Now I need to add the red worms. And I bought my red worms from Will's Worms. He is, Will and his sister, um, Alyssa, are kindergartners and second graders here at Carpenter. And they raise worms. And they are quite expert worm growers. So I am going to go through here and I'm gonna pick out about 20 worms. Okay, so boys and girls, I made two containers. 
the t this container is going to continue contain only uh, soil, sticks, leaves, paper, water, air, and worms. So this is one complete system. And I'm going to add my worms to it now. Here's some of my lovely worms. You can see them. These worms are so awesome. They are called decomposers. And what worms do is that they eat organic matter. So the paper is organic matter. It came from a tree. And the, tree, the paper will be eaten by the worms and the worms will poop it out and there it's called their castings and the castings are fantastic for the soil so i have all these worms and i'm going to put them in this system okay i've got a bunch more worms here we go oh have a good time in there little wormy i'm going to put the top on now guess what there's lots of little holes in the top so that air can continue to go in and out. So this is a complete system. We have an earthworm habitat that consists of geosphere elements, the earth materials, the hydrosphere, the water we added, atmosphere, there's holes in the top, and the biosphere includes the worms, but it also includes the bacteria and other like dead plants and animals that were in the soil. Okay, now I have a second container and it has the same things except I'm going to put in a piece of plastic. And this is one of the, this is actually really important that I want you to pay attention to. So here, this is what the plastic look like, looks like today. I'm gonna put it in this container. And now I'm gonna add my worms, same exact worms from Will's Worms. In they go. They're gonna have a grand old time here. Put the top on. Whoops, I had a little worm go shooting across. I'm gonna open up and put that worm back in here. Okay, my plastic is in there. And we have the second container that is the same, except it also contains plastic. So now we're gonna set them aside and we'll look at them every week, but we're gonna see what does it look like over time. Please get that, pe that page, Making a Red Worm Habitat. I glued it into my science notebook so that I remember all the different parts that we put into the uh, habitat. And then I went back to the table of contents and I put it into my table of contents, number 10, red worm habitat. Mine is on page 15. And then I went to the next page and I drew a picture of my worm habitat. And I labeled the different things. I have the soil, I have the shredded paper, I have the um, leaves, and I have the worms. And then I talked about the geosphere, the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, and the biosphere. And the geosphere is all the rock, the sand, silt, and clay. The atmosphere is all of the air that fills up this container. The hydrosphere includes the moisture in the soil, but also the water that I added. And the biosphere includes the worms. Yes, the worms, but there's a lot of other things in here in the biosphere. There's the dead leaves that were in the soil. There's the sticks and the twigs. But in addition, there's the bacteria and fungus that are in the soil, which are beneficial to the entire system. So please make sure that you draw a picture of the system in your notebook and then write a quick little description. I wrote the worm habitat is a complete system that contains all of the Earth's four spheres. Okay, so we set up our worm habitat and now we're gonna do a little planting. So you have these cups in your container, into your, in your science bag and you should have a little bag of soil that I gave everybody. And you're gonna put these, the soil in the cups. 
There's, you should have plenty and you might even have a little bit left over. And then this envelope contains some seeds. These are wheat seeds. And if you like cookies and uh, cake and bread, well, thank goodness for wheat because uh, wheat is will grow and then it'll be harvested and into flour, ground into flour. And I'm gonna sprinkle a few seeds into my cups like that. And I'm also going to, I'm, I have a little bowl and I have a wet napkin and I'm going to put a few seeds on my wet napkin. Now, it's important that you keep it moist. Um, you can do it or you don't have to. You, uh, to keep it moist so that we can see the seeds start to sprout or to germinate. So I've got my seeds in my cup and I have seeds like this. And now I'm gonna put a little bit of soil on top of my seeds and tap it down a little bit. And then I'm gonna add a little water. All right, so now I have watered my little containers with the seeds in them, and you guys can water yours as well. And I'm gonna do something a little different than what you're gonna do at home. At home, I would like you to take one of these containers and leave it on a counter or in a windowsill, something like that. Make sure it's under, and there's a, a saucer or a bowl underneath it so it doesn't drip everywhere. And then I would like you to take one of them and put it in a dark closet. Now, remember to check on them every two or three days, add just a teeny bit of water so they continue to grow. But I am gonna take mine and I'm gonna put one of them in a transparent plastic container and bag, I'm going to seal it closed. And now I have a closed system, right? I have my soil and my, my seeds and everything, and I'm not gonna water it or do anything else, but I'm gonna leave it in the sunlight. I'm gonna let it so that it has light, whoops, coming through the bag. The other container, I'm going to put in a black plastic bag and I'm gonna seal it and I'm not going to let it get any sunlight. And I'm going to just leave them side by side and then we'll be able to observe them over the next couple of weeks. So today we set up basically two different habitats. We have a habitat for some plants, some seeds that are gonna grow and that habitat has got a complete system, it's got the atmosphere, it's got the geosphere, it's got the biosphere, and it's got the hydrosphere. We set up a worm habitat, which has also all of those four spheres. And we are gonna be watching these systems for the next few weeks. Now, we're gonna have Thanksgiving break. Please make sure to water your seeds and keep an eye on them over the next week. Have a great break. See you next time, guys.